sorry about that, y'all. We had some technical difficulties. Sorry about that, guys. We had some uh, technical difficulties um, with our camera. We got a new fancy setup, courtesy of my buddy Jeff. So we were having some issues with it, but uh, we made the adjustments that we needed to make. So we're going to get started in a couple minutes. Uh, good news tonight. Um, our trivia question at the end of this, um, the winner is going to get two Phillies tickets tonight, which is pretty cool. Um, buddy of mine, he didn't want to be mentioned, works for the Phillies. And I uh, thought these videos have been pretty cool. His son's been watching. So he said, as long as my trivia question is Phillies-based, he'll uh, donate two tickets to the winner. So I'm letting some people chime in uh, right now. See uh, people starting to sign in now. See the Steinmetz are in. Greg Blewett's watching. Then Oik, Jeff K. Um, Josh from the 13U. The Lynches are watching. Alexander Moritz is back watching. You don't have to leave any Joey Bro, Al Pick. Anizios, my buddy Fred Masters back on. Michael Zolt's back on. Tommy Zaz is watching. Danny Flynn and Matt. And the list continues and continues. Look, you can literally see it. If you are watching, comment. Let us know that you're watching so we have an idea who's all watching. Look. So, at the end of tonight's little base running uh, expo we're going to do, um, I'm going to ask a trivia question, and the winner's going to get two Phillies tickets. So that's pretty cool. I don't know when the season's going to start, but um, like I'll figure out all the information and get it whoever gets the right question. So tonight we're going to be going over just some fundamental base running. I got my assistant, Jude. Hold on, I'm going to flip the camera around. You can see him doing a little dance. He's out there dancing around, getting ready to demonstrate for us. He's got his Royals gear on, his uniform. He's getting itchy to play also, so. So, again, base running. It's very important, very, very important that um, kids learn how to base run. People take that skill for granted. And it's a big thing in your games as you get older. Um, it can get you on the field in high school. Um, coaches really look for good base runners, to be honest with you. So we're just going to go over some tips and tricks tonight, mainly for the younger guys, um, the 11, 12s, 13s. You know, these guys, the 11s are just getting onto the field where they can steal. You know, the 12s are just coming off their first year. Um, a lot of kids aren't taught things to look for and things to do to make them better. So. We're going to get started. In about a minute, I'm going to turn the camera around. You're going to see Jude for a second, and I'll go back out there, and we'll get started. Okay. Say hi, Jude. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thanks. All right, so base running. Like I said, very important part of the game today, and people take it for granted. Everybody thinks... Just because a kid's fast means he's going to be a good base runner. I can tell you firsthand, on my teams, the fastest kids are not the best base runners. Okay, It's, it's about learning what to see when you're stealing a base. Uh, good jumps, how to hit corners, your angles, stuff like that. So, you know, the fast kids aren't always the best base runners. Um, I, I really believe that a good base runner, a good base stealer, for instance, is only as good as his coaches also. Um, the third base coach flashes the sign, which is fine, but the first base coach can't be afraid to tell a guy to get off the base, any coaches that are watching. Push your guys off the base. I see too many guys standing over there at first base with their arms folded, tapping their feet, you know, and then when the kid gets thrown out stealing second or, you know, doesn't move on a pass ball or something like that, they're screaming at the kid, and that's not right. You should push them off. Kids have to learn. They have to be comfortable. 
A lot of kids are timid when they get on the bases. You know, pitchers throw over. Kids are developing better moves now. So first base coaches, push your kids off the base, okay? Everyone thinks first base coaching is not an important spot. It's very important, okay? I took it very serious when I coached in high school for a couple teams I did it. So help your players get off the base, okay? So base, base running right off the bat, again, is about reading a pitcher. So when we get the first base, whether we get hit by a pitch, we walk, we hit a single, however it is, first thing you want to do when you get the first base is get your signs, okay? Get your signs. Look over. I know kids are excited when they get a hit and they're high-fiving the first base coach and all that other stuff. Get your signs. That is so key, okay, so key when you're playing, when you, when you get the first base. So when we get our signs, okay, now the coach didn't give me a steal sign. Does that mean we don't get a big lead still? Absolutely not. You still want to get a big lead, you know, especially if there's two outs, you know, or a kid hits a ball in a gap. Those extra three or two or three steps you could take on a lead could be the difference in you scoring. How many bang-bang plays do you see at the plate? But that's because, think about it, the kid wasn't off the base far enough to make it a bang-bang play when they're scoring from first, second, or third. So, Rule of thumb, and any base running is, you know, don't cross your feet over, okay? I'm going to grab my base. We're using cones again because we're in the house. This is something you can do in the house. Practice your needs. My pitcher is you guys, okay? I always want to step off with my foot closest to home plate or the pitcher. Come around, okay, and shuffle off the base, okay? Just shuffle off the base. We never want to cross our feet over. We never want to step out this way and then cross our feet over. You know, I never, I never took base run serious when I first started coaching. And when I watched the guys that I was coaching with, with teach base running, they made a big deal about crossing your feet over. And I never understood why until I actually saw it in a game. You know, kids cross their feet over. And if you're playing a good team and you're playing a team with a bunch of kids that know how to play baseball, the third baseman's going to see you crossing your feet over. He's going to signal the pitcher, especially a right-hander. The second you cross your feet over, they're going to make a signal, and boom, they're going to throw you. They're going to back pick you or pick you off or whatever. So let's never try to cross our feet over. We never want to take leads like this, okay? All right? We always want to step out, come around, and shuffle off the base, okay? All right? Now, get bigger leads, okay? Obviously, the golden rule is we're diving back to the back corner of the base when we go back in. So you want to get a lead big enough big enough to where you're diving back in, okay? To me, the kids that take the three feet leads are just lazy, they just wanna go back in walking, okay? No, get a big lead, be aggressive. As a base runner, your mentality should be, if I get picked off, it's not on me, it's on my first base coach, okay? Be aggressive, okay? We don't wanna take short leads when we're not stealing and then extend our lead when we are gonna steal. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. A good catcher, a good pitcher, and a good coach playing against you is going to say, all right, every time they take a three-foot lead, they're not stealing. Every time they take a five-foot lead, they're stealing. That's an advantage for us on defense. So don't cross your feet over. That's rule number one, okay? All right? Get your big leads, okay? When we steal, okay, I'm in my lead. I'm way off the base. A lot of kids start their steal move hopping like this, and then they go, okay? You need to take your leg and drive. So when we're stealing, you should have your foot turned a little bit anyway. And when we get ready to go, this leg should drive right to second base. Okay? It's called a good jump. Another big thing. The slowest runners steal bases if they know how to run bases. Okay? And then the fast guys, because they're fast, think they can start like this and then take off. It doesn't work that way. Okay? So, again, always drive your first, your first move is driving towards second base. Pretty simple, right? Like I said, it sounds simple, but again, the best base runners aren't always the fastest guys, okay? All right, so that's just basic stealing stuff, okay? If we have a right-handed pitcher, the way I teach it, I know there's different ways to teach things, so again, this is the way I teach it. I teach it, when the pitcher comes set, we're gonna watch his front leg, okay? We're watching his front leg with a right-handed pitcher, because the second that front leg goes up, or moves, he has to go to the plate. So that's when we take off. I see too many kids where right-handed pitcher comes set, leg goes up, 
He releases, and then they break. It doesn't matter. Once that front leg slightly moves, twitches, anything, they can't stop. It's a balk if they stop, okay? So they come set, front leg moves, you're gone. Second, if you're gone. Another way to look at it is you could watch his back leg because the only way a right-hander can throw over is if he steps off with his back leg. But to me, that's kind of being on defensive. You're looking for a throw over instead of looking for a throw to the plate. We want the pitcher to go to the plate so we can steal. So I teach, watch your front leg. Come set, front leg moves, we're gone, okay? It's just a good little trick and tip to teach kids, okay? Like I said, too many kids, they get the steal sign. I, got, I had kids, pitcher's here, he's here, he's here, and then they go. Well, we're getting thrown, they're wondering why they're getting thrown out by 10 feet. No fast kids, okay? Then I got my slow guys who really know how to run the bases and are locked into that front leg, and the second that thing moves, they're going. They're being saved by 10 feet. So that's the difference. That's the difference when you're stealing a base, okay? Lefties, it's a whole advanced thing. I'll briefly get into it. I'm not going to go crazy with it. I teach all the Royals this. So if you watch my teams play, they're very good at doing this. A lot of other teams don't. I know the well-coached teams do. Left-handed pitcher, it's called a first move. Pitcher comes set. Jude's going to demonstrate. Okay? We're going to tell Jude not to steal here. So he's going to do his one-way lead. So Jude is not stealing right now on a left-handed pitcher. Pitcher comes set. Leg goes up. Wrong way. Wrong way. He's rocking back towards the base. That way, if the pitcher throws over, he can get back. Do it again. Same thing. Now, Judah's seven, remember. He ain't even allowed to steal for four years, but he's learning now. Left-handed pitcher, he's not stealing right now. Come set. Left-handed pitcher, go, leg goes up. He's rocking back to the base. When we go to the plate, we're getting into our secondary. Good. Now, with a left-handed pitcher and a steal, we like to call, go first move. Again, something I was taught by guys that taught me, and it's worked for me throughout the years, for my guys. So, first move with a left-handed pitcher is... Pitcher comes set, front leg, as soon as the front leg moves, we're gone. Now with a lefty, with a lefty, when they bring their front leg up, they're still allowed to throw over. But it's been kind of scientifically proven that when they do throw over, if we're stealing and Jude takes off here with the leg going up, take off, take off, you're stealing, do it again, you're stealing here. All right, he didn't know the sign. All right, so Judah's going to steal here. So lefty, leg comes up. He's gone. Now if the lefty sees him steal and decides to throw over, it takes almost the same amount of time at the little league level for the pitcher to throw to first, the first baseman to get the ball and throw to the shortstop covering as it does for the pitcher to throw to the plate and the catcher to throw down. That's why with a left-handed pitcher, we go on first move. Okay, because we like our chances. When they throw over and we're already gone, the first baseman has to get an angle. A lot of kids aren't taught that. Okay, first baseman has to catch the ball, get an angle, make a perfect throw to the shortstop to get us out. I like my chances on that. So that's just your base. That's just your stealing, um, your left-handers, right-handers, and stuff like that. Okay, again, so to recap, we're not crossing over our legs. Um, we're getting bigger leads. Who cares if we get picked off? It's only coaches, kids, so... Take your big leads. Be aggressive. Coaches, push these kids off the base. It's very, very, very important, okay? All right, push them off the base. Okay, we'll move to second base now. Another important spot when you get to second base, because I consider second base scoring position no matter how many outs there are, okay? That's why we need good leads, okay? Second base is here. It's the same principles, okay? Now with second base, I like to have my guys take a slight when there's less than two outs. A slight step back, so you can kind of see, you, can, you, you, you move back a little for a couple of reasons. You're pushing the players back behind you a little bit more, um, and you can see more, okay? Then you're getting a nice big lead, okay? You're listening to your third base coach or your first base coach, whoever's assigned to you. I like to assign my first base coach to take care of the guy on second, more, more, less, less, so I can see everything that's going on. But there's third base coaches that do it too. So second base, you need to be really aggressive, all right? Like our cat's watching. <laughs> all right? So on second base, you have to be really, really aggressive. All right? Really good secondaries, okay? Really good secondaries. You're really depending on your coaches, your, 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 your teammates on the bench, 
So when you get your secondary lead, you know, we got these short stops that like to drift behind, and you got these active catchers. So you do have to be on your toes, but it doesn't mean you can't get big, big leads, okay? Big leads from second base. If the pitcher's not watching you, and again, you have a good coach that lets you kind of take off on your own, if he's not watching you at all, you can steal third very easily, okay? Just don't get crazy with it, okay? But a lot of times you get these pitchers at these younger ages don't, that aren't even taught to look at second. Okay, so that's why we try to get a little bigger on second base. Same thing now with two outs. We I like to push my guys even further back. I like to have my guys come back three or four feet, come back three or four feet, then take your lead. Okay? It does a couple things. You're moving on contact with two outs no matter what. You're always moving. Okay? You're not, you're not shuffling off the base. You're jogging. Your secondary lead with two outs as soon as the pitcher throws, should be trotting towards third in case it's hit. Because you're running no matter what. Okay, with less than two outs, you're not running, obviously, on everything. You're freezing on line drives. If the ball's hit to your right shoulder, you're going back to the base. But with two outs, we're looking to score. So two out leads, I like to push my guys even deeper back. It pushes the shortstop back. It pushes everybody back. Maybe a slow dribble to short, our guy beats it out. But it also, you can take your angle out. You don't have to make that big looping turn, okay, if you're, if you're back in, in the baseline, okay? There's not really a baseline between second and third. You play on one of those fields with a big dirt infield, you can get far, even further back. That way now, the pitcher pitches, you're trotting your secondary, if the ball's hit, you got a direct angle right to third, and you can make your turn and score easily, okay? Easily, and that's what we're looking to do, all right? So that's second base stuff. Um, the other thing I want to go over is obviously I always scream at my guys and it's a big thing now, kids get doubled off. Freeze on a line drive. You're on base, less than two outs, and the ball's hit on a line. If it's hit on a line, you freeze. Just freeze. Okay, freeze and look around and see where the ball's at. Too many kids just break and we're getting too many double plays out there these days. On line drives at a shortstop, all you have to do is flip it behind you at second and get you or even throw it across the first or even third. Okay, again, with two outs, you're breaking on anything. Less than two outs on a line drive, you have to freeze, okay? When you're on second base with less than two outs and a ground ball is hit, the way I teach it is, if it's hit to your left shoulder, you break for third, okay? So that means it's pretty much up the middle, and that means the shortstop is going to be going against you to get the ball, momentum carrying him. There's really no way he's going to field it, turn, and make a good throw to third and get you out. He's going to go to first. So with less than two outs and a ball hit to your left shoulder, take third. Ball hit to your right shoulder, obviously, if it's hit to your right shoulder, you want to go back to second. Or hang a little bit off the base, make him make the throw to first and see what happens, okay? Ball hit right at you, it's just, it's your call. <laughs> but I always say if the ball's hit right at you, kind of go back to the base also, okay? Because you should have a big lead, which means you're right in the shortstop's territory to make a play. So that's another thing, okay? When you're on second base, make sure you know where the ball is hitting, what you're going to do. Is it hit to my left side? I'm breaking. If it's hit to my right side, I'm heading back to the base. It's a line drive. I'm freezing, okay? We're not going to get into all the tag up stuff. Your coach should be telling you situational stuff when you're on the base. If the ball's hit the right field with less than two outs, you're looking to tag up. You know, anything else, you're going halfway. And that's, that's pretty simple. Now we'll move over to third base. Third base, again, is important, okay? Obviously, 101, base running 101 from third base. When you're taking your lead from third base, you want to go out and foul ground, okay? You go out and foul ground. Take your lead and be in foul in case the ball gets whacked down the line and hits you. If you're in fair play, you're out. We don't want to be out, okay? Now, another cool thing I was taught when I started coaching that, again, people don't really think about you go out and foul, and then most kids go out and foul and just walk right back in, okay? Which gives a catcher a chance to throw you out. If you're out and foul ground and the base is right there, the catcher's over there, and you're walking back here, third base, we can sneak right in, and you're a dead duck. So we go out and foul, and what do I say to everybody? Go back in fair. Go back in on the baseline. Get in the baseline, and don't give anybody an angle to throw you out. Okay, so out and foul, step back in fair, keep your head on the ball, and go back to the bag. 
Another thing I see kids do on third base, they take their lead. As soon as the pitcher pitches and the catcher catches it, they don't look at anything. They just turn around and run right back to the base. Stay out there. As long as you step out and then step back in the foul line, the catcher's not going to be able to throw you out without hitting you or overthrowing. See what happens. You know how many times does a ball get thrown over the pitcher's head or short hopped? Or that we can steal, we can take home. Okay? These are just little things that you can do to win a game. Base running is so huge. Now, as far as when you hit the ball, we all know about, you know, you want to hit the inside corner all the way around. When you're running, get yourself good angles. This is all stuff you can practice in the house. Set up cones. You saw Jude earlier. Go ahead. Jude practices. Jude always practices taking his leads. Mom or dad or somebody can be the pitcher. Jude's stealing here. Leg goes up. He's gone. Okay. Do it again. Right-handed pitcher. Do 10 of these a day with your dad, sister, mom. Let them be the pitcher. Throw them back over. Same with the left-hander. Make sure you're rock back. We're not stealing. Okay? Just have, just raise your leg. You see them rock back. Throw over. He gets back. Do your first move. Okay? Now he's stealing with a lefty. He's gone. It's stuff you can go over in the house. You can practice your needs. I mean, you can stand, stand on anything. A pillow. Step out. Swing it around. Shuffle, shuffle. You know, work on getting bigger leads. Time yourself getting back to the base. You know, just get bigger and bigger and bigger leads, okay? So you're comfortable, okay? You can work on where you go back to the base at. You don't have to dive in the house, but if you want to practice head first slides, you can. Right back to the back corner. <laughs> All right? So that's stuff you work on. Same with your second, uh, two out leads from second base. You're on the base, practice stepping back, step in. You know, say, ball's hit to my left shoulder, I'm breaking. Right shoulder, go back to 10 left shoulders, and say it every time, left shoulder and break. Right shoulder, back. Line drive, free, say it to yourself, talk to yourself, okay? It starts to become instilled in your brain, okay? And then third base, same thing. Literally practice stepping out and fail, stepping back in fair, and keeping your head up. Do 10 of that. Step out and foul. Back and fair. Back to the base. All things we can work on uh, in the house for base running. We did bunting the first night, same thing. I got a lot of videos of kids, parents sending me videos of them practicing bunting. It's cool. The defensive stuff we did the other night, everybody's sending me stuff of their kids doing that. And then this base running stuff, it's, it's the little things that help you win games. Trust me, I mean, I've coached a lot, a lot of games. I've been involved in a lot of close games. Um, ironically enough, uh, I was lucky enough to win Catholic League down at Newman Garetti back in 2012, 2012, and Mike was a huge base running guy, and we won the damn championship game in extra innings on a button run of all things where a guy scored from first base. So learn how to run the bases. Cut your corners, cut your angles. It all works, okay? And then obviously, you can practice sliding. <laughs> this maniac, watch him, he practices his sliding head first. I don't condone that, but he does it, and you know, he's getting all his practicing inside the house while we're all contained with this virus. All right, so, I hope uh, everybody learned something tonight um, about base running. Like I said, you don't have to be fast to be a good base runner. I think slower kids sometimes just assume they're not going to be a good base runner, so they don't really focus on it. Like I said, most of the fast kids, when they're younger, the coaches just tell them to steal because they make it every time. But they don't really learn how to run the bases. And then the slower kids have to really focus on things to get to, get, get, get to places, get from A to B or, you know, second to third or third to home. So they become the better base runners as they get older and they get a little quicker. All right? So we do have a trivia question for tonight. I'm going to step back behind the camera. So I can see all the answers coming in. Give us 30 seconds, you're performing today. Okay. So the trivia question tonight wins two Phillies tickets. I don't know when. I don't know what game. I know they were donated. We'll say by the Phillies, a friend of mine who works at the Phillies. Um, so it's base running related. So the question is, here's the question. Can you name the Philadelphia Phillies Leading stolen base guys in the 2019 season and how many they had. 
There was two guys tied for stolen bases for the Phillies in 2019. Name the two guys and tell me how many they had and you'll win the tickets. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, yeah, I know what to do. I know what it is. I know what it is. Oh, yeah. See the people. Uh... Okay. People are going to Google it. Okay. I see more guys chiming in. Donk, world famous golfer. Fred Johnson, how you doing, Freddie? Dave, the Andersons checking in. Right? Joey Lang, no. Mizio, Utley's retired. Two thousand nineteen season. Two guys, and how many? No. Anderson's close. No. Who do we got here? Who's going to get the answer? Close. The roster close. And how many? Denny Flynn, super close. Oh, I knew it is. You got to tell me how many also. We have a winner. Bryce Harper and Scott Kingery, the Maritzes, 15. Bryce Harper, Scott Kingery tied last year for 15 stolen bases for the Phillies and led the team. I knew it was stolen like Bryce Harper. So the, um, Alexander Maritz, I think he won a trivia question the other night. So uh, he, wins again, he wins again tonight. Um, this was fun again tonight. We did base running. I'll post the video on my page. If you want your kids to watch it, tell them to chime in. It's fun. Base running's fun. So I appreciate everybody chiming in. We'll have another video probably in two days. Everybody's answering now, but you're too late. The Maritz has already answered. One more time, I'll say it. The correct answer was Bryce Harper and Scott Kingery both had 15 stolen bases. Matt Flynn says boo. For what? You, uh, because you said 14, you moron. All right, good job tonight, everybody. I appreciate everybody watching. I'll see everybody probably in two days to go over another topic, all right? Thanks again.